so basically what's next is I'm gonna go ahead and get my connections inside hooked up as far as running my 20 gauge negative wire my 20 gauge positive wire and, and just getting those set up and place those in the two holes that I drilled earlier so I'm just gonna take the pixel glass off real quick and over here is where I'm basically going to start my negative connection is I'm just going to solder that to this bus wire at the end and I'm going to have that run along this line on the edge of the corner here all the way back down and it's going to come across here at the end and remember I had drilled two holes down here at the very corner which I'm going to actually run the negative cord in and from the positive end I can just start right here from this first solar cell so that's again that's gonna be my positive side of the whole solar cells hooked up in series and then I'm gonna have this negative connection down here at the end of my series connection of solar cells so that's probably what I'm gonna do next and then after that I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill my holes for my pixel glass in the actual frame because you don't want to drill through the pixel glass with just a regular screw as you're probably going to crack the pixel glass and you'll be going back out to Home Depot again so I'll probably just go ahead and show you how I'm going to go about that it's pretty much simple it's the same way on how I actually did the bus wire it's nothing really no, it's not any tricks to it I'm just going to use basic solder so I'm going to go ahead and do that now so what I have here again is my positive 20 gauge wire. Again, you want to check on the gauges depending on the size panel that you're going to make. And for this one, I can get by with just using the regular 20 gauge wire. So again, I have my negative, which is going to be black, and I have my red, which is going to be positive. It, don't have to be, it doesn't have to be those colors, but I mean, again, uh, that's just the standard colors people use for positive and negative. And it's going to help you later down the line when you're trying to hook it up to the other systems. So again, I'm just going to start with my negative connection here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take my, my pliers here and just cut a nice length of it. And just wrap this around here. Try to make it as straight as you can. No loose ends, loose strands. And one thing that you can do, which is optional, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because I'm just experimenting as I go here but I went to Walmart and actually got some connectors that I can put on top of it and basically I would take this side of the lead and place it inside of it and just clamp it and what this is going to do is just going to give me a better edge to work with when I start to solder it to the actual bus wire so you can do that or you can just skip that step it doesn't matter again I'm just experimenting with different materials that I have and seeing what's easier to work with alright so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this entire roll I'm not gonna cut it or anything not at this point because I don't really know how much wire I'm gonna need and actually mount it to the roof so what I'm gonna do is just take this negative lead here and just go ahead and run it through the hole that we drilled down here at the end and I just go ahead and show you that alright so basically I'm just going to take this neck of wire here and I'm just going to run it through the bottom up through this hole that I made alright now I'm just going to leave this off to the side just run enough so I can at least I have enough to connect it to that bus wire at the other end. And I'm just going to leave this here for now. And the reason I would, I recommend just leaving it on the roll and not just taking it all off the roll because again, you're going to have all this additional wire just laying around. And remember, we still have to put this pixel glass on here. So you want to keep your workspace nice and neat and clean as you can. So again, I'm just going to do the same thing with the positive connection. So I'm just going to take my red wire here, 
Let's go. Yeah, I'm just gonna take my pliers again and just cut a nice long strip, just cut a good strip off the, the wire. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run my red polish with wire through the hole and again just strip off a nice long strip so you have a nice long lead so we have a, a lot to work with when we're starting to apply the solder. So I'm just going to run it through the hole here. All right, and again, I don't need that much from the red positive connection because, I mean, the bus that I'm gonna solder that to is just exactly right here, so just need it to be that short. And again, keep it on the road, we can just set it to the side for now. And now we can just start soldering the actual wires to the bus wire. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do, like I said, I'm gonna experiment with this little piece here. And I'm gonna take my negative connection I'm gonna work with that first and what I did was just aligned it with the piece just to see how long I needed the wire to make a good connection I'm just gonna slide it in here and what I have is another type of wire stripper you can find these from I got this from Radio Shack actually and I'm just gonna place it here and it has a metal piece inside of it and that's the part that I'm trying to squeeze down the actually hold the wire in there. Alright, then I'm just going to test it to make sure it's not moving or anything and it's, it's a real nice tight fit there. And you can also use heat strength, which I believe I have. I'm probably not going to have to use it in this project, but what it is, I got these from Walmart, they're not too expensive. Uh, I would just basically slide that over. Or I would have already had this on on the wire. And there's a couple of YouTube videos you can find on how to work with heat shrink tubing. And it just helps with, uh, if this was exposed, which it's not, so that's why I'm not really going to use it. Uh, it would just help with water, you know, getting it inside the, in the wire and everything. And as you can see, some of my wire is exposed. So uh, it would be a good idea to probably use it if I did have this wire exposed to the different weather conditions. All right, what I also got today from Lowe's was a wire mold. And what this basically is gonna do is just hide this black negative connection that I have right here. And I'm probably just gonna put it alongside here and just cut off the accents that I don't need. So, I think this probably cost about um, around $10 or so with tax. And it's just, again, nice to actually hide the cords that I'm going to put inside here. And it's white too, so if you do want to go this route and just give it a more of a nicer look, more professional look, uh, just make sure you get a white one so it match your actual frame here. What I also got was some flat elbows. Uh, these were around probably $3. Got them from those too. And it just goes on the end of this uh, wire mold here. And it just gives it a nice edge and helps to prevent from exposing the negative connection wire as well. All right, so now I've cut my wire mold. Hey guys, to speed up the process of me getting the rest of the videos out, just subscribe to this video as it does show me you guys are interested and I try to speed up the process of getting the rest of the videos out as I do have to edit these and I do try to make them interesting. So again, just subscribe to the video and I try my best to get them out a little quicker for you guys.